Hey everyone, my name is Megan Beatty and I am helping Rising Star Outreach's Rise to Wellness campaign by giving you a couple of photography tips. So uh, I am the photographer and owner of Megan Beatty Photography. I am a wedding photographer based out of Provo, Utah. And recently on my Instagram account, I asked people who were beginning photographers, not photographers at all, or professional photographers, if they had any questions about general photography tips. And I compiled a document with all the questions and my answers and put together a little presentation to help guide us through this, but I'll be looking at my phone throughout to make sure I'm leaving no stone unturned as far as answering these questions correctly. Um, well, correctly, with what I had already planned on answering, so I'm not just winging it. But anyway, the general organization of how I'm going to do this video is we will start with basic camera settings, shooting techniques, posing subjects, editing your photos, and a couple tips about starting to build a photography business if that's something that you are interested in. And I'm hoping that today's video will be useful not only if you want to be a professional photographer, but just if you want to improve your general photography skills on your iPhone or with a smaller point-and-shoot camera because we're just capturing memories all over the place today um, and I think it's important that we know how to use a camera effectively. So we'll start with basic camera settings. Alright so the first question I got was what are best practices for camera settings, how should you set it up for different lighting situations and whatnot. So I'll start by explaining, um, this is my camera here, I'm using my other camera to actually film this, but um, there are three different mechanisms in your camera that you should know of, and that's an aperture, ISO, and your shutter. So the ISO controls how sensitive your camera sensor is to light coming into it. Uh, the, lower sen the lower the ISO, the lower the sensitivity, and the higher the ISO, the more sensitive your sensor is to light, the more light will be able to come in. Your shutter controls how much light is able to come in between um, the clicks in your camera. And the slower the shutter speed, the more light is able to come in before the shutter clicks, and the brighter your photo will be. As far as aperture, that is the hole in your camera, and you can widen, widen, or make smaller your, um, your aperture, and that will also control how much light is allowed into your camera sensor. So the smaller your aperture, the less light will be let in. So there's your basic camera settings. Um, yeah, so if you want a brighter photo, you should either decrease your shutter speed or increase your app. No, decrease your aperture or increase your ISO sensitivity. Uh, I'm going to go really fast with these questions because there are quite a few of them. So the second question I got was why do you need different lenses for your camera? And let's see. Yeah. Okay, so you don't technically need different lenses, but if you want to have more control over how close or far away from your subject you want to be, then it's helpful to have different lenses. Um, I have four. One of them is on this camera, one is here, and then here are two that I'm not using. Um, the difference in lenses has to do with what's called focal length. So uh, this is a... 24 millimeter lens and that is an 85 millimeter lens. The larger the focal length, the further away you can be from your subject while still getting a close shot, if that makes sense. And the smaller or the, the lower the number in focal length, for example this 24 millimeter lens, will allow you to get a much wider shot of the landscape surrounding the subject. Um, while you're still fairly close to the subject, if that makes sense. So that's why I have different lenses, so that I can control how far away I can be from the subject. Yeah, hopefully that made sense. 
the next question I got was how to best frame your subject, the subject that you are taking a photo of. And I'll, I'll just talk a little bit about what's called the rule of thirds. And that basically says that your anything within your frame is split into one, two, three, four. Yeah, four cross-cutting lines. And it is said that the most pleasing to the eye is when the subject of your photo falls within one of these points where the lines cross. So best practice for framing your subject, I would say if you want to stick to the rule of thirds, you would want to keep your subject here, 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 or hereabouts. But art is subjective and you can actually do whatever you want as long as it looks good to you. But that's the general rule that we follow, that we try to follow sometimes. It depends on the day. Um, okay. The next question that I got was how to tell if you yourself are in focus in a photo. So let's say you get your photos taken, you get some prints back, and you look at it, and you want to be able to tell if you're in or out of focus. When the subjects are further away from the camera, it's, um, it's not quite so easy to tell as if the, cat, the shot is a, a close-up of your face, for example. But I would say that if you look closely at the image and look at the edges of the subject, if it's a, even a teensy bit blurry, then it's likely that that subject was a little bit out of focus. If it's crisp and clean, and there's a nice separation between the subject and its background, um, or a clear and defined separation between the subject and its background, then the subject is in focus. All right, okay. And I got a lot of different questions about how to deal with certain lighting situations. Um, yeah. So the first was how to deal with indoor lighting. Indoor lighting is generally pretty yellow and it's a lot darker and the only light source is coming from above which creates shadows on your, on your subjects. So what I do is I bring what's called an off-camera flash or speed light and I put a light diffuser on it. This is a mag sphere that just pops right on there and you put that right there on the shoe horn of your camera and it'll just oh that was a test let's see oh it was on the highest setting so it won't take as many flashes as quickly because it took more energy for one flash but yeah so you put it on there and then you have control over where you want to bounce light off of or if you want to just put light directly on the subject and it goes off with your shutter and that is able to help you deal with indoor lighting situations. Um, the next question I got was what is the best time of day to take pictures? I think that that's subjective. You'll hear a lot that golden hour is prime time for taking pictures. And it is if you want golden photos, um, bright photos, a lot of nicely backlit subjects, if that makes sense. Um, so if you want that, then golden hour is great. And that is about a half an hour before sunset. And I personally like blue hour, which occurs about 15 minutes after sunset. And I don't know if you've heard that phrase, but blue hour is just when everything, the goldenness is gone, everything is still light-ish, but everything is turned into blue and purple hues around you. And I like that because I'm still able to get an evenly lit subject and um, it's just nice. And it's a little cooler toned, but you're still able to maintain skin tones. So I like that. And then, yeah, direct sunlight is also a really cool time of day to, to take photos, and that's about at midday when the sun's high in the sky. And you can get some really awesome photos of people directly lit by the sun. No shadows on them. It's really bright, but they're, they're evenly lit and bright. 
and the colors are pretty true to to how it looks to your natural eye when shooting in direct sunlight, in my opinion. All this is just my opinion, so. Okay. Yeah, so next I got a couple of questions about specific shooting situations, the first being how to take pictures of the night sky. Um, we've all seen pictures of the Milky Way galaxy, um, beautiful photos taken at night, and I have not mastered that, but I can tell you how to generally get photos like that, though I haven't tried to take them in years. Um, I should. It's a fun time. But basically, you set up your camera on a tripod to make sure it's steady, because you're going to have to open up your, or slow down your shutter speed to multiple seconds, which is really, really quite slow, uh, and a really long time to have your shutter open in between like taking the photo. And that will allow more light from the stars to end and from the surrounding um, landscape to come in through your lens. And you'll get star trails, which is when uh, maybe you've seen photos of the night sky, like just tons of circles and orbits in the night sky. And that comes from the shutter being open for a very long time so long that it's actually seeing the stars move. Or, you know what I mean, how they move when the Earth rotates. I'm not a scientist. And yeah, the next I got was how to make water look silky smooth in a photograph. And so to take pictures of running water, the key here is also a, sh a slower shutter speed. Because if your shutter is open for a longer amount of time, it's able to catch the movement happening in the water since it's constantly running and then by the time it closes it's caught all of that movement to make it look like a smooth trail of water rather than when it's a fast shutter speed you just take a picture of like one moment in time and you see the little droplets of water rather than their actual movement so slow shutter speed is the ticket all right the next questions i got were all about how to pose people um yeah, the first was how to get, how to uh, time the perfect shot. Um, we've all had photos taken of us where we're making a funny face, or even when you're watching Netflix and you pause the frame or pause your movie for a second and someone's face is like, ugh, um, because they're in the middle of talking or whatever. Point being, when I take photos of, of couples and individuals, I just try to take as many frames per second as I can. If I give them a direction like, okay, run towards me, look at each other, and smile, I will take pictures of the whole process. And not all of those will be winners, but one of them should be. So it's less about timing the perfect shot, more about being there taking multiple photos as things are happening. And then at least one will be good most of the time. Uh, yeah, the second question I got regarding posing was how to pose different body types between couples and individuals. Um, what did I put here? Yeah, so I, I have two things to say to this. First, people pose all the time without even realizing it. You sit in certain ways that make you feel comfortable, you look at yourself in the mirror, and I make faces at myself in the mirror when I'm washing my hands, um, but you smile at yourself, you know what you, how to place yourself that makes you look good when you're standing, when you're sitting, and you probably don't even realize you're doing it. Um, so what I do is, when I'm at a photo session, um, I just, I talk to the people I'm photographing and I ask them, okay, how do you, how do you normally stand? How do you stand that makes you feel comfortable? Or when you're sitting, how do you sit that makes you feel comfortable? And they'll usually place themselves, and then you just make small adjustments. Um, if you notice that something it doesn't look quite as flattering, you just make small adjustments to their hands, their arms, and help them lengthen their body a little bit to look a little bit more regal, if that's what, you, if that's what you're going for. And in the end, it works out nice. I also show them the back of the camera so that they can see if they like how they look and then they can make their own adjustments accordingly. Um, the second thing I have to say to this is give people moving directions. I gave an example a couple minutes ago of uh, me telling a couple to run towards me, look at each other, and smile. 
if you give them moving instructions, yeah, and you just take pictures of the entire process, you're sure to find a winner. So that's how I post people. Okay, and then I got a couple of questions about how to edit your photos. Um, I could like, do a whole huge long video about editing because it's 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 just a really long process and there's so much that you can do um, in Lightroom, in Photoshop, and even in Instagram you can go in and edit your photos. And I'm not talking about putting filters on your photos, but rather going to the edit tab and using their um, saturation, warmth, color, highlights, shadows, exp or not exposure, yeah, yeah, exposure, contrast, all of those different tools to make your photo look how you want it to look. Um, there's just so much I could say about that, I don't quite know where to start, but for my edits I try to make them look as natural as possible while still enhancing the general look of the, of the photo. And I do that by increasing the contrast a little bit, uh, decreasing the highlights, or yeah, increasing the highlights, I'm viewing the sliders in my mind. Um, yeah, bringing down the highlights and bringing up the shadows. And that way the skin tones aren't as contrasty and they're able to look kind of creamy, if that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it does to you, depending on what you've seen and what you've noticed. Um, yeah, and I'll brighten or darken my image based on the original lighting situation. If I was shooting at midday and it's just too bright, I will bring down the exposure slider so that the whole image is darkened a little bit and you can bring down those highlights as well to make it a little bit darker. Um, if the image is too dark, bring up that brightness. It really depends on the image that you're dealing with, but that's very generally what, what I do. Okay, and lastly I had a couple of questions about cameras generally and building a business. The first was, what camera should I buy? Um, that is a broad question and it depends on your needs. If you want to start doing photography professionally, you would want to get a, what's called a full frame camera, which has, uh, which means the sensor in the camera itself is not cropped and you're able to get the entire frame of what you're seeing. Um, and I shoot with, a, with two cameras uh, that have full frame sensors and it's the Nikon D750 and I love them. I think they're really great. Um, and you can get them cheaper now than, than you could when I bought them, so that's great. If you're just wanting to take nice pictures around your house and of your family, but you want a fancy camera to do that, or a DSLR, you could easily buy an entry-level cropped sensor camera. Uh, I started out with a Nikon D3200, so I would say anything from a Nikon D3200 to a Nikon D5200, 7100, all of those would get you great photos. Um, more generally though, if you're looking to print out photos that you take of your, of your family, of your life, um, at the very least you want a camera that has 16 um, megapixels. And you can print out most sizes with that. 16 to 24, but 16 I would say is a good base for that. So the last question I got was how to build a client base when you're starting a photography business. Um, there's no one right answer to this, but I would say shoot every day, shoot whatever you can, and show that work. Whether that be um, finding local galleries, or just spreading it on social media, on Instagram, local Facebook groups, your personal Facebook account, um, Reddit, um, TikTok now as well. I think just sharing what you're doing will help you bring people in. And asking past clients for referrals as well and doing things at discounted or free rates when you're just starting out will help you build that client base. And that's my answer to that. So hopefully this video was helpful to anyone who's wanting to get started in photography. And if you have any further questions for me about anything, you can hit me up on Instagram. My handle is at 
Megan Beatty photo. I'll probably put that in the description here. Or my website is meganbeattyphotography.com and you can reach me there as well. Thank you and I wish you a very happy shooting.